Not many people would have guessed that a comedian can have so much information about how money works. And I'm not talking about myself. When we would earn 100,000 shillings, for example, we were the three of us. That is what you saw at the front. But there was a whole crew like yours over here that people don't see. When the money starts to check in, <laughs> yes. did you guys feel the money coming? And were you ever overwhelmed by money? Because there was a place when I say monopoly, I mean monopoly. We all know Walter Mongare, aka Nyambane, but not many people know him like this. When you start now having that negotiation within those frameworks, it ceases to be about your talent. It's not because I'm funny that I'm here. You're here to make money. Now, Walter Mongare has served the Kenyan public in various capacities. He is the former director of youth programs in the office of the president. He has served the State Department of Foreign Affairs as the director of programs, advocacy and outreach. But many people will recognize him as the acting president. My names are Daniel Doroidi Jarab Moy, EBS, EZG, EBS, Gay BZ, Gay BL, East African Industries, Commander in Chief of the Armed Forces of Kenya. Our guest for this episode probably doesn't get enough flowers for this, but he is the only comedian, and I stand by what I'm going to say. Nyambane is the only comedian who has successfully worked the toughest crowd in this country. That's the public holidays audience. <laughs> There are times that Tony and KJ and I would get on stage and we crack a very serious joke and the audience is still waiting for the joke. See, it's a serious joke. What? Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you got, me. You got yeah. me right there. Before this conversation, I had heard the rumors, but I didn't like actually know Walter Mungare as the master negotiator that he is. The challenge with that thing of wanting to undercut in the market so that you can go in People will associate you with that prize for the rest of your life. You are at a place where uh, yeah. you got the job. Mm -hmm. And these are, these are the stories in the village. Eh? Eh, no, you, you can either <coughs> confirm yes. or deny <laughs> that once you sign the contract, one month in the job, mm -hmm. if someone fires you, they mm -hmm. have to pay you two years ahead. Yeah. How did that happen? Walter Mongare is a brilliant mind, both academically and streetwise. He actually made it to the Dean's List at Daystar University. Today, we are going to make the best out of this session. We are going to tap into and get the most of the knowledge he has in the field of how money works. Where am I going to pitch? Do I need to be, the, to be there? Do I need to get money from them? Or do I need to get value from them? Because not everything is about money. I love Sasa Kweles to create your plugging. If you happen to like any of my outfits in this production or any other productions we've posted or shared with you, please allow me to plug you to Zimax Styles. I'm a Zimax Enterprises. Zimax was a pioneer building uh, right next to IM and directly opposite Poster House. Zimax Styles is a top men's clothing in the CBD. Feel free to reach out to them. Classic uh, outfits, quality fabrics. Now, very good after sale services. If you like any kituyotu mnawa ni medunga, consider yourself plugged. I'm your host, Dr. Kingori, and here's another reason to stay subscribed to our channel. Come how just subscribe. Now's a good time to hit subscribe and turn on the notifications bell. Yeah. The, the beautiful thing about having a conversation on money with you, I don't know how many people have, have ever heard ama wamesikia rumors, yeah, how good you are with money, especially <laughs> kwa negotiation, because... When I got to Nation, mm -hmm. um, you used to be given as an example. Okay. Yeah. E contract kama nyambani alikuwa nayo. And, and correct me if I'm wrong. Mm -hmm. Ilikuwa ni uh, au fupiki job. Uh -huh. That was, uh, I think, a bit cute. <laughs> uh, you can't be fired uh -huh. because it's too expensive okay. to fire you. Mm -hmm. Right? Okay. How did you come to learn the ropes to get to that level? Because um, this goes to your first transition into radio. Okay. How do you become an, an expert negotiator wa mushara? Mm. And what was your first experience ya kwa kwa job? Thanks, bro. And uh, thanks for just having this conversation. There are two things that uh, when it comes to negotiation mm. that you need to differentiate. That's the negotiator and the negotiation. Those are two different things. Okay. Uh, the negotiator comes with understanding, deep understanding of what you're looking for an understanding of who you are and who you're talking to. 
Now, if you don't understand those paraphernalia and even appearance and even how you walk in and mm -hmm. even how you present yourself and how you present your package and your product will determine the price. For instance, when we were growing up and we were starting off, uh, you know, the comedy um, artists, musicians, yeah. those were seen to be, um, you, you come to the show or you come to the event, we give you money, uh, we give you food and we give you transport and mm -hmm. you entertain us. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. that, was the, that was, I mean, it wasn't seen to be a value add to your event. Yes. So we, with time we noticed, it's how you present yourself from the word go. And majority of us as artists, you want to show up in a starlet and you're asking for 350,000 a gig. Mm -hmm. Now, when somebody looks at you, how you arrived and what you're asking for <laughs> to different worlds, mm -hmm. uh, because they start questioning whether you have the ability or even understand what you're asking for. So okay. there's the part of a negotiator. What exactly, how do you package yourself yes. when you're going into a negotiation, yes. having understood your product and having understood yourself and the value that you carry and having understood your client in terms of what are the limitations. There are people who would come and start to negotiate and, and ask you for three million for a gig as an artist or as a musician and the entire budget for sound, uh, my publicity, mm -hmm. uh, other artists is three million. Mm -hmm. it's, it's called you, you did not just understand your client mm -hmm. and understand where am I going to pitch? Do I need to be, the, to be there? Do I need to get money from them or do I need to get value from them? Because not everything is about money. There are gigs that we did that continued to give us exposure. And therefore, you look at your client as a marketing opportunity. You don't look at your client as a money-making opportunity. There are, there are events as, as ridiculous as Tony, KJ, and I, the events that we propagated and did because it was a marketing opportunity. So what do you get out of that? You would get the publicity you need. You will get the exposure you need. And it's beyond money. There are gigs that you know this one I'm going in for money because uh, many times we are told as, 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 as comedians, as musicians, you know, we are marketing you. We, we, are, uh, we are exposing you. We are, we, it, it gets to a point where when you understand yourself that yeah. I'm beyond that point of where I need to negotiate those things, I need to put my price on the table, it gets to a point where you take it or you leave it. Wow. Yeah. Uh, so there's a <clears throat> negotiator and there's negotiation. Negotiation. Yeah. Uh, the negotiator understands all the factors yes. to do with the conversation yes. on money. Yeah. Yeah. So the, what's the difference with the negotiation? Negotiation, when you understand the client, yes. when you understand that I'm, I'm not going to ask uh, a king for 300 when mm -hmm. the entire budget is 250. Now that is negotiation. It's, it's oh. beyond yourself. It's beyond who you think you are. It's beyond your words. It's beyond your products. It's understanding the ecosystem. Mm. that I'm, I'm, I'm going in here because I need to get other value other than money. So there are gigs that we would do for pro bono, yeah. but we know what value it's adding. Yes. Now, that's, that's, now that's what I call negotiation. You look at all the factors beyond yourself. So red card mm. is plastic. <clears throat> There's no way at it. Mimi nalipangwa 300,000, so mm. that's cast on, cast on stone. Yeah, you're, you're, you're not selling tomatoes. You're selling a service. That's the difference. Mm. Yeah, we offer a service. Entertainment okay. is a service. A band is a product. Okay? Yeah. The music is a product. But when you now present it to people, it becomes a service. That, mm -hmm. That's why people talk about experience. Okay. okay yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We enjoy the music. If you ask somebody, what did you enjoy? They, they actually can't tell you, but it's experience. Yeah. So where do you guys learn this? Like uh, when you started, mm -hmm. you say there was a... Did you guys... Uh, were, you guys did you guys, were you guys in the industry... Mm -hmm actively at a mm -hmm. time when people are being paid with food. Yes, that's where we began. Uh, and uh, I, I remember a gentleman called Obed uh, on Route 45. Uh, those days, Thicker Road was just Thicker Road. Mm. And it was just one, one road. Mm. Uh, and and uh, for, for, for those of you who are enjoying the highway, it never existed in our time. Mm. And so Obed had a matatu on that road. Mm. And so whenever we had a gig, he was our transport. Mm. 
And whenever we arrived, at least we arrived in a van mm. with all our <clears throat> with all our paraphernalia. <laughs> and and mm. and because of that, people now started to look down upon you because Ah, say, oh, mm. They have just come in in, in in a matatu van, so their value definitely has gone down. So we'll just give them food and entertain. And that's before and ridiculous that's is ridiculous. Yes, and that is that is when we were now growing, getting mm. into the market, getting the exposure. Mm -hmm. But then we understood that at that particular point, your product is not in the market. And therefore, you will take food in exchange for your service. It's a butter trade before currency is introduced. Your product is not in the market. Yes. Yeah. You, you don't show up. You're a young band. You're a young comedian. And you want to charge like Walter. Then, then you've lacked the curve of growth mm -hmm. in you. Okay. Anytime someone introducing a new product, they would go to, they will do what you call market storm. And, and, give you uh, an introductory rate mm. because it's a new product in the mm. market. Mm. But now the rest of us as artists, you're coming in and saying, but King is, is charging this much. So I think I want to charge like him. He's traveled a road that has curves, de depressions, highs, lows, mm -hmm. and he has perfected the art and the act, and he has connected with the audience, and therefore, that product is already in the market. And that it's at that point when you now either charge premium, and when you start charging premium, then you need to know that your product can't be everywhere. Mm. Your product can't be everywhere? Yes, yeah. What does that so, mean? So we would choose the kind of gigs that we do, because then you reduce your burnout and exposure. Mm. If and you're you everywhere, your every week, every day, then why would I pay you premium? When do you get to refresh your product? When do you get to, you know, tune your product uh, with an evolving market? You're inspiring other people. They're coming into the market. Other comedian, comedians are coming into the market. But you're still looking at yourself like, you know, I need to charge. Uh, I need to compete with them. Mm -hmm. So you can't. So that scarcity also, you know, gives value. Uh, to, to, to your product. Do you remember the transition? Mm. Do you remember the process? Mm. Like, yes, say you are going, you're showing up in a matatu. Mm. Where do you, how do you step up to the next level? Mm. And how, where do you get the knowledge? Yeah, now it's time yeah. to charge premium. I like the, the question on knowledge. Uh, people confuse education and knowledge. Education, you can go to class. To, we have CBC now. In our mm. days, we had 844. And you would go to class and get education. Go mm -hmm. to university and get educated. <clears throat> that is what we all think education is. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to knowledge, it's the deep understanding. Now, that that you think you've read, do you understand it? Or do you just replicate? Mm -hmm. Now, in order for us to have made a transition, we needed to understand ourselves. And we needed education and knowledge combined to know the right moment for you to make a shift. So for those of us who think when you're an entertainer, when you're, 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 you're a band member, that you don't have education or you're not educated, uh, let me uh, take this opportunity to clarify one thing. For you to be a comedian who's foolish, you've got to be very, very intelligent to know how to act foolish. Mm -hmm. So, so the thing, the notion of artists are not educated. I, I find it very interesting that uh, for those of you who know Kofi Olomide, mm. uh, did you imagine that's an engineer? Or you just think it's about Lingala Seben? When you think about some of the greatest names in the entertainment industry, mm. uh, that's why I don't speak about myself. Uh, <clears throat> Yeah, so that I don't. I so I don't. I don't. On, I, I, I don't. On the <laughs> list, uh, <laughs> so, at so I don't. I, I don't sell my university daystar. I don't. Mm. I don't. I don't. You mm. know, mm. Uh, the thing is, it's important for you to get the education for you to know how to count your money. The negotiation that you're talking about, mm -hmm. for me to negotiate properly, I need to understand the legal process. 
Mm-hmm. So that means I need a lawyer who mm-hmm. then I understand what he's doing because my lawyer mm-hmm. is acting on my behalf and is going to champion what I need. So if you don't know what you need, how is the lawyer going to help you out? Mm-hmm. Or how do you understand that your lawyer is not doing exactly what you wanted? Okay. You need to understand. You, you, in fact, being an artist is such a liability that you need to be everything at the same time. You need to be the lawyer. Because then you understand yourself and you understand the parameters upon which you can negotiate. Mm-hmm. You need to be the audience because then you need to understand how the audience needs to react for you to package your product properly. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, a whole, it's a whole science. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the aspect of education and the aspect of knowledge in order for you to make sound decisions when it comes to your product and for you to realize that, wait a minute, it's not comedy. It's a product. I'm, I'm selling a service in exchange for money. Mm. So therefore, what is the level of investment in your product or in your service? <clears throat> most, most of us, when we were starting out and when we were growing in the industry, uh, we, we looked at growing our product and growing our service. In the sense that when we would earn 100,000 shillings, for example, we were the three of us that is what you saw at the front. Mm. But there was a whole crew like yours over here mm. that people don't see. They, they see the two of us on this set. But the number of young people mm. behind these cameras is amazing. Mm. So when you get 100,000, you have to split that 100,000 into five. Okay. So five, the, the fifth, one-fifth for them, one-fifth for the product, because you have to inject money back to the product, then you can take the other fifth jumukwatatu, and you are three of you, each one of you can take now the remaining you know, ones. So that, that is your 100,000 is, is split into 20,000. 20,000 put it back into your trade. Every show that you're doing improve. I'll, I'll, I mean, looking at your set, looking at the, the, the level of investment, yeah. I'm sure these young people on the cameras, every day they are telling you there's a new lens that has mm-hmm. come in. Mm-hmm. How do you get to afford that new lens if you didn't budget for it, if you mm-hmm. didn't factor it in your earnings? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the, we, let us not be people who you earn money in the real estate and then you go and invest in cars. Two different products. And I think we'll get to that <clears throat> in diversification. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm, I'm very curious. Yes. You, 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 you've dropped figures, but I don't want to talk figures, but let's talk figures. Mm. You've mentioned 100,000. Uh, before you, 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 you guys opened yeah. a pioneering like a national platform, mm-hmm. very daring, actually, I should say. Mkafungulia mm-hmm. uh, second, Skodia Churchill. Mm-hmm. And by the time Churchill comes, mm-hmm. uh, he, had, um, he had set a rate card, like the rate card had come through for doing corporate gigs, right? Okay. <clears throat> uh, how, for, for, for you guys, Kuingiakwa Industry, without a template, yeah, this is how much we charge for a performance. Mm-hmm. How do you arrive at the decision that yeah, this is our value? That's what I mean by a process. Yes. And the transition. Like, sour, to go to Nalipo and Apilao, but now, pay us 100,000. Uh, actually, that process began by understanding who you are and what you have. <clears throat> what you need to know is that, for sure, I have a winning formula. And I have a product and I have a service. That I know because I believe in the product that I have. All right? Mm. Now, going into the market, that is where the cut trick is. That's where the cut transition is. That's when you need to think, when do I make this product at a cheap rate for entering into the market? At a cheap rate? Yes. Affordable. What people call cheap is what you call affordable. Mm. It's an entry price. Mm. I'll give you this as what you call optics in, in our life, in, in our growing in the industry as comedians, as entertainers. You needed to know, and that's the knowledge I was talking about, that people respect American comedy. I mean, they respected anything foreign. They, they, <clears throat> they, they appreciated anything that was coming from out. And so what you do, you go out and come back. 
So at uh, that point <laughs> is when we changed our red card. Because now they looked at you as a, like them. We had to leave the country, go to America, package ourselves, and come back. Now, majority of musicians, if, if you're in Kisumu, for example, please come to Nairobi and then go back to Kisumu. <laughs> the red card will change. Yes, yes, Be- yes, because yes. naturally and psychologically, mm. if they look up to Nairobi, mm. then they will start treating you as a man who understands what goes on in Nairobi. Ah. So that's, 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 that's a transition. Yeah. Interesting, interesting. And uh, how do you know, did you negotiate for your first TV deal mm. based on what you've had goes on in America? No, no. Our, our, <clears throat> our first appearance locally was local. Uh, our America then was Kenyatta University. And it's told if you can entertain your fellow students and they buy your show, then it's a success. So it means as you, pr- as you, as you test out your product, Test it at the local level. Okay. If, if your family thinks you're funny, actually the village can find you funny. If your family does not find you funny, stop thinking you're funny. Stop going to the community thinking you're going to be funny. So for us, we knew from Kenyatta University where we started that the moment we were able to connect with our fellow students and they were okay with the product and they were happy with the product and the service we were giving them, then we scaled it up. Okay. Now, when you scale up, you start going outskirts of your comfort zone. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, it, it's, uh, it's not always a guarantee uh, that they will laugh. It's not always a guarantee that your first show will be a hit. Severally, there are misses. Yes. Uh, there are times that Tony and KJ and I would get on stage and we crack a very serious joke and the audience is still waiting for the joke. It's a serious joke. What? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got, me. You got yeah. me right there. Uh-huh. So it's not always that it will make sense out there. Mm-hmm. You, so you, you have to keep trying. So what, what it, what it, yeah? Every week, you had some hard, tough days. Yes. There's one show that uh, we had. Uh, we had, you know, we, had, we were successful uh, as, as, a, as a trio. And we were in demand. And so we got to a point where we choose. When the demand is high, <clears throat> you check on your supply. Yes. So we, we were at a point where we were looking at it and saying, mm-hmm. okay, there's a show here, there's a gig. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> there's a gig here by the police commissioner. The pol- ah. And uh, uh, the police commissioner then, uh, for, for, for purposes of history, uh, was pol- police commissioner Bongo. Philemon. Yes. And they were very curious of these young people who are imitating the president and the, the craze of, of town and everybody's is in, inviting them to their event. Mm. And so the police one did not want to be left behind. So they hired us to come and entertain them. And so uh, I can tell you for free the first 10, 15 minutes, it was a very difficult show. <laughs> because, yes. number one, you're trying to act as, as President Moy. The commander in chief. To all the commanders, Interpol and all the police. By the way, the easiest they can do is arrest you right there. <laughs> so, in, 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 in other words, you've taken yourself to be arrested. Yes. <clears throat> and nobody was laughing. And everybody's looking at the police commissioner mm. for the cue. Well, the, the jokes are funny. Yes, yes. The act is entertaining. Yes. But guys but are like, yes, okay. yes, uh, yes. Mm. Uh, until mm. Tony at that point, I think he got a, he got a, you know, a, a, a her moment. Yeah. And he just whispered in my ear and he said, uh, in the voice of the president, mm. just tell the commander to stand up. And you see, the policemen take orders. And the policemen respect chain of command. And so when Moi was like, Evo Gomanda Shimama, automatically he stood up, not Naturally. because yes, not because it's conditional. Not mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. not because he, he he was part of the skit, but yes, psychologically yes. we had connected with him. Mm-hmm. And when he did that, now everybody else died in the room and everybody started laughing because they were like, if he can respond to that, then we are safe. So 
Oh, but for the first 15 minutes, uh, 15 minutes it, was, was a, it was it was a very, <laughs> it was it was a hard show. Yeah. But it's it's those are the things that we were talking about earlier. Mm-hmm. When you've got knowledge of the audience that you're talking to, mm-hmm. then you prepare for them or you keep studying your audience as you go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You, you don't just have a preset joke or comedy that you pangadi and you say today this is how I'm going to flow. And if they're not connecting with you and you're still flowing, when do you get the transition in the show to say it's not connecting, I need to change course? Bro, I find this strange. <clears throat> number one, you guys had a monopoly. Mm-hmm. You understand? Like you ruled airwaves. Yeah, yeah. you are the first whatever appointment to view. Mm-hmm. Right? <clears throat> yes. If Family someone, show. If Family someone show. did not watch, mm-hmm. they had to hear about it. Mm-hmm. You understand? Mm-hmm. Like, and that was I, very bad. You needed to watch it. You needed to have first hand. You see? Yes. So you actually got to all corners of the country. You want mm. to tell me that even at that level of success, yes. there yeah. are still people who did not connect with mm. you at that level. Yeah. Because if your product or your service is not transitioning, because remember, there's a novelty aspect in any show, any comedy that you're doing. It's the first time they're watching you. Uh, it's the second time they're watching you. <clears throat> third time they're watching you, when they get to the fourth and the fifth time, they start getting used to you. They start thinking they are, they, they, we know what they will do mm. because there's familiarity checking in. Now, you as an artist, if you don't have the acumen to keep reinventing yourself and refreshing your product mm. or your service and making it better every each day so that then there's a surprise element mm. to your audiences, trust me, Okay. Uh, uh, it will be an uphill task. So, <clears throat> as an expert negotiator, uh, you, you, I, I don't think you get enough credit for um, launching radio comedy. Because mm. after you, and then uh, Jalas came in, mm. I think that was then people, as in being on radio, being on radio became now the next big thing for comedy, okay. right? <clears throat> uh, you, you, you get hired as a star on another platform right, on yeah. TV, mm-hmm. then you can get into radio. How do you negotiate for a salary? Give us a prom example of knowing your value, mm-hmm. right, and understanding the market. Okay. I'll just give you a simple, you know, arithmetic uh, example. When you start, when, when somebody is hiring you from another platform, it's they've already understood who you are and they, have, they, they attach a value <clears throat> on to you. Okay. By the time we are leaving TV and going on to radio, they have already looked at numbers. They have already looked at these guys uh, can make good numbers on radio. Therefore, your conversation mm-hmm. ceases to be about your talent. Mm-hmm. Your conversation begins to be towards the service. And most of us confuse uh, that just because I'm talented, then I will just sell. It's beyond just the talent. Now, the negotiation now begins to be, yes, you're calling us for the radio gig. What are you looking at as the radio manager Mm -hmm. or the radio owner? Mm -hmm. What are you looking as a turnover Mm -hmm. with our involvement? With me coming on board, how much are you likely to make on me, with me on breakfast? Mm -hmm. So if you're making, if you're anticipating to make 300,000, then I think my contribution is a third. So I will take third, a third of that. So then you go into a space where you co-create the relationship. You go into a place where you're almost an owner of the product, okay, or the service. And then you start negoti- negotiating on the details that we call copyright. And, and copyright, when it comes to the product, the, the artistry in you, that is your copyright. Then what, what does the radio owner have? He has the airing rights. Now, that is, when you start now having that negotiation within those frameworks, it's easier to be about your talent. It's not because I'm funny that I'm here. You're here to make money. And if you're to make money, how much money are we looking at making? So that I can be part of the success story. I may not take your 90%, I'll take 30%. And you, t- you keep the 70%. No. <clears throat> no. <laughs> 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 
Really? Eh, unataka kuambia mtu ni 15. No, it's it's as I said. It, it's it's a science. You negotiate on value. Yes. Yeah. And and also as you negotiate on value, you've got to understand that uh you 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 have a time a time limit. Time limit. Yes, and you you you're not you're not infinite. Because you inspire other young people who are coming onto the market doing what you're doing because it makes money. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Have you seen that kiosk in your neighborhood mm-hmm. where Mama Jemima started yes. selling tomatoes and tomatoes were doing so well and then King's mother also because the tomatoes are selling mm-hmm. she also brought tomatoes. Yes. Because they are selling. Mhm. And 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 somebody else felt if these guys are making money from tomatoes let me also get tomatoes because it's a selling product with time what happens <clears throat> the price goes down yes. there's oversupply mm. so the the demand is the demand is is guys are spoiled for choice so therefore you start competing on price you drop your price so that you are competitive so that you can sell quantity your neighbor drops it down further and that is that's what happens to us in the entertainment industry where you as a comedian who's upcoming you say i can come and do the same thing at 40000 that walter is charging 200000 mm. well they will take you for 40000 because they they are looking at 250 and 40000 they are saving a whole 140 so why would they take walter yeah but imagine a situation where you came and sat down with walter and said listen walter i want to go under your wing I want to go under your staple. I want to go under your <clears throat> I want to go under your company so that you negotiate and I benefit from the group rate. Therefore, it's my business that is already stable and I will tell my guys listen. Mm-hmm. Here is here is a king. King is as good as me. So but because he's a new kid in the block, don't give him 250, give him 200. Now that I start you in a level where you can sustain the challenge with that thing of wanting to undercut in the market so that you can go in mm. people will associate you with that price for the rest of your life so you get more value from apprenticeship yes in all industries than breaking away wow and why why you ever why you okay ndio mfike kwa hesabu because industry was so kienyeji in your time mm-hmm. uh, so for you to get to a place where you have to split the 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 fractions in terms of uh, the, the business get a fifth uh, mm-hmm. uh, we get a fifth uh, amongst ourselves right yeah yeah uh, you arrive at this did you ever fight like fight for the money but then you need each other you have to work together ama how do you arrive at by the to go you you when you start as a group you are driven by passion <clears throat> okay yeah. you're driven by what you do and you like each other for what you do and you can do anything you can, you can even do the show for free because you like what you're doing mm-hmm. but then when the money checks in you realize uh, actually we are making some money out of this yes if your systems and processes are not put in checks mm. that's when groups begin to f- fall apart because you've not factored in <clears throat> guys we are starting this as a passion some day what if it becomes successful and so that introduces the value of tomorrow where even as you negotiate you're not looking at the ratings of today you're talking about if we come in onto your platform today you have 2 million viewers if we come onto your platform with our 1 million then that makes it 3 million So which means we need to look at the value of 3 million not at the 2 million that we are or not at the 1 million that I am. Yeah. So so at that point we were privileged to have a head basic education that teaches you discipline that teaches you decorum that teaches you you know uh you need to, you need to coexist this guy is good and I'm good and if we partner together we can be better. Now that's where the kind education now comes in handy because then you have <clears throat> you have exposure mm. you're not acting out of foolishness okay. or out of passion okay. so when we understand that tomorrow it's likely to get better then we put systems in place that protect us for tomorrow nice yeah 
uh, you, <clears throat> there's a very strong statement you say there, when the money starts to check in. Mm. I'd like us to go into when <clears throat> the money starts to check in. Yeah. But uh, Kama, Kama, you felt it. Mm. But then, mm. uh, playing uh, President Moi then was risky. Mm -hmm. How did you know it's safe to come out as an imitation of the president? Uh, I would call that foolish and innocent courage. Uh, we didn't think about it. You didn't? That one, we didn't think about it. No one can lie to you that we thought about it and we said, now it's safe to come out. No. I think we were just foolish. We were passionate about what we did and we just did it. And the coincidences of life that yes. you would play <clears throat> Moi, <throat> Moi goes out, yeah. then... Um, Kibaki, uh, Kibaki comes, comes in, in and you have Tony. Yes, and, and we had Uru Kenyatta. And if we were still on, we would have uh, William Ruto. And later on, probably people will be acting about me. Yeah. <laughs> well played, well played. When the money starts to check in. Yes. <clears throat> did you guys feel the money coming? And were you ever overwhelmed by money? Because there was a place, when I say monopoly, I mean monopoly. Yes. Uh, the systems that we put in place, we were lucky, as we said, and that is a knowledge that we are sharing so that those who are, you know, going into this space can start to pick those lessons so that in life, we don't have all the time to learn by ourselves. Mm. We learn from others. Mm. So there are mistakes that we made <clears throat> when we were coming up. There are lessons that we quickly learned. One of the things I can tell you, and I think uh, this, I, I give it to our Kikuyu brothers, uh, I, I think when it came to Mambo na Mbeja, I think we left it to Tony in our group. Mm. Okay, when he was older than us, he okay. had been earning before us, so we naturally believed that he could manage the money more than we do. Oh, he so can. Tony remained our accountant and our guy who deals with money. Mm -hmm. I remained the guy who generates the money. KJ remains the guy who checks the product. And the service. That's how we split ourselves into roles. The difference between the generator <clears throat> yes. and the person who accounts for them. Yes, money. yeah. You can be everything. And that is when we understood those roles, it made it very easy for us to transition to any level. There was no fight about money. We knew no matter how much I negotiated, I brought it to the table, Tony would do the maths. Tony would do the allocations. Uh, KJ and I and everyone else will just be re recipients of the decisions that Tony made financial decisions that he made. But <clears throat> were you ever shocked by money? Uh, yes. Our first amount that we got. The first amount? The first got. amount that we got. How much was it? 40,000 shillings. Ah, Gwenda. Yes. <laughs> Why would 40,000 shock you? To ligawa pesa kakadi. That was in 1998. 40,000? Yeah, 40,000. Na tulikuwa six in the group. 40K. So 40K cash and it's new notes. And so we had to distribute it like cards. How? Zilikuwa zinakata kuisha. Aye. Yes. Please, just for context. Think please. about 500s. Okay? Or 40,000. How many notes are those? Okay? Wow. And then think about you have to make sure that everybody gets, gets an equal share. So you, you just have to do mathematics. No, you, you distribute it until the last Kila one. Part of the same. Yes, yes. <laughs> and how, how uh, to, to give context, yes. what could you do with mm. 40,000 in 1998? A lot. Uh, for those of us who, who stay in Rai, or for those of us who stay in Raqqa, in 1998, for those of us who would stay in the outskirts in Rongai when it was... Uh, a forest, and it was a forest. It was animal park and everything else. Uh, Forty by eighty was going for fifteen thousand shillings on a good day. So, what wouldn't you do with forty thousand shillings? I get the context. Yeah, yeah. But why those, you those those plots today? They're talking about millions. millions yeah. yeah, it's called the the fact of time in any in anything. Yeah. yeah. And, and why, <clears throat> when you were paid by surprise, you didn't know what the amount of money you were expecting. No, Where no. did the 40,000 come from? The, the 40,000, that is when we first did our first uh, open mic show, and it was a talent search, and the top prize was 40,000 shillings. And Malibu star search. You weren't that's when sure. we did the, our first gig. And you weren't sure 
yes. that you would be the winner. No. We want we we didn't know that we would win. So after you settle at 40,000. Yes. Is this now the new bar of how much someone needs to pay you? No. You had now to still go back to the same people who have an attitude towards you. You are just comedians. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so to talk about your food, <laughs> transport, and you entertainers. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But with time, as we said, when they understand and you keep hammering the same thing, that's why we said it go to a point where we're not going to do the gig. You, you've got to learn to say no to an offer. Uh, can you say you, you, no you, to you, an offer? Yes. No to an offer <clears throat> and you don't have money? Yes. If you want what we call sustainability, if you want to be there tomorrow, you must learn to position and price your product and service properly. In the absence of that, anything goes. So you've got to learn to say no. And sometimes when we learn to say no, not because we just want to say no, it, it's, it's because you've got to make sure that you're not saturating your presence in the market. What's, what's the difference between saying no because of value <clears throat> na saying no kwa sababu na ringa? By the way, kuringa ni important, but moderate it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's when you understand yourself. People, by the way, most of the time, people confuse confidence with arrogance. When you're very confident to you know yourself, you know what to do, people confuse that for arrogance because you will be able to say, I'm sorry, I can't take it. And not because you're arrogant, but because you're confident of what you're offering. And so uh, when you say that, it's very possible that people would brand you Ule Mse Wakuringa. Okay. Yeah, but it's not, it's not that. It's understanding what you have and okay. what your value is. Okay. And it's the confidence that you have in what you are offering. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. And um, you say something about uh, understanding, as in how you show up. Mm. how you present yourself, mm. right? Determines the price. Determines the price. Yeah. And, and this will get people to the point where the kind mm. of vehicle you want to show up with, mm. is this what puts uh, people, say, in, in, the, in the entertainment sector, mm. in my industry, into the trap of living a lifestyle that they cannot afford to mm. present an image that they want to charge for? And I, I would think the image and lifestyle are two different things, okay? Uh, an image is almost uh, what you call now showing, trendy. This is me now. This is who I am, which is not sustainable. Mm -hmm. Lifestyle is what we know. That's, that's who you are. That's the yesterday, tomorrow, the day after, <clears throat> the now, the tomorrow is the same. That's the, that begins to be lifestyle. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, what, it's who you are. Image is a bit trendy. You want to show up. It's, it's now and... And that's it. It's a flicker. So, image is <clears throat> uh, one of uh, yeah. Lifestyle, lifestyle is, is consistent. It's consistency. Yeah. So, majority of us would would take all these things and not know when to transition from one point to another. There's a time for image, by the way. There's a time for you to dress in a certain way, uh, mm -hmm. and 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 there's a time for you to know that uh, that was for the moment, <clears throat> and mm -hmm. and I need to. To, to also, it's what people call living within your means, but I call it so long as you understand how to create the means. Mm. When people are telling you this is where you're, this is your ceiling, mm. I, I like it because I can always lift my ceiling. I don't have a problem with a ceiling. Mm. I don't have a problem with the live within your means. It's me who determines what my means are. It is you who yes. determines what yeah. it means. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the aspect of understanding that I need to do something that is sustainable, and then that's lifestyle. Mm. Tomorrow, Nyambane or Walter Mongare, you will still find him as Walter Mongare as Nyambane. The, the, the opportunities that I've had <clears throat> to serve in various capacities, I've learned that uh, there's a difference between the office you serve and you, the person particularly the offices that have been privileged to serve in government, have learned that there's a difference between the crown that they salute, the sir they call me, and Walter that I am. Because tomorrow king will become the position that I am, and they will still call you the sir, and they will still salute you.
So I've learned to differentiate between who I am mm-hmm. and where I am. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So th- those are things that uh, uh, we need to understand as artists. Yeah. Okay, when they scream and when they sign, they, they want to sign your autograph and they, oh my God, oh my God, yes. oh my God, oh my God, uh, it's not you. Yes. It's yes. what you do. Yes, yes, yes. yes People yes. don't identify me because of Walter Mongare. Mm-hmm. They don't identify me with what I do. Okay. okay. They love what I do. They don't love me. Okay. Yeah. Namiliwai Gongwa. In this process, uh, <clears throat> Kama, there's a very interesting story about uh, you guys in the UK. In the UK. The touring. The UK. In the, the UK. UK. Was it the first tour ya kuenda kutengeneza Valley in Domurudi? Eh, eh. It comes at a cost. It was the first time? Eh. How did this come about and how did it happen? Ah, we were coming from the US and we decided we'd been called for a gig, which really? had no basis in the UK. And we had made some little dollars in America. And so we were like, come out to me and as I do America. You can't do it. Pounds, my friend. Uh, there were no euros then. Yes, yes, yes. <clears throat> so we made a detour and we decided to go through Europe. And yes. we decided to go through London. And we had such a fantastic show and it was packed. And the guy who organized the event kept on telling us, to Kimaliza show, when we are done, and then we'll sit down, we'll do the maths because the negotiation that we had entered to, and I think uh, Tony and KJ will never forgive me for that. I convinced them that <laughs> we will get our money as soon as we are done because I was now the guy who creates the money, then Tony can take over yes, from yes. there. And I convinced them that this is a good deal. These yes. guys are genuine. These guys <clears throat> are, are straight. They have promised that once we land, they will give us the refund of our tickets. Once we get there, they'll do everything else. And that, that gives, and of course, when we landed, they gave us the refund for our tickets, which was a bait. And we swallowed it. And so we were sure. And I told the guys, didn't I relax, tell you? Relax. relax, I got this. You yeah. know, that, that statement we all make. Mm-hmm. And we did a fantastic show. And, and I remember one guy called us on the side and he was like, come guys, let me show you. Let me show you something. You see this Range Rover over here? Man, I've bought this Range Rover from, your, from selling your tapes. Now, that's, that is the first level of Kugongwa. From selling your tapes? Yes, in the UK. Someone confesses to stealing from no, you. He's so happy to tell you. He's not confessing. To him, it's not <laughs> confession. He's so happy to show you what he has earned using your trade. And that's where the copyright comes in, and that's where the laws comes in. And we'll talk about the transition, why some of us must leave being on stage to owning the stage, to different things. So finishing the story, <clears throat> we were there and we've done the gig and it's successful. And the guy who's supposed to pay us the money is like, we've got enough money, don't worry guys. Kwanza, see you're leaving tomorrow. Yeah, I'm in the same plane with you to Nairobi. So don't worry. So uh, I've kept the money for you, so it's safe. So when we're in the plane, I'll give you the money. Uh, I knew things had gone south. <laughs> Uh, but now we, for the love of entertainment, for the love of a new market, uh, we've, you know, connected with our fans in the UK. So you start doing a trade-off. What value did I get out of this? What exposure did I get out you of start this? start rationalizing. <clears throat> yes. Some of the greatest lessons are not the things that you learn in school. Uh, you learn in life. How did that affect how you do business from that point? Um, uh, it, it just asks you to straighten and uh, make your your regulations and your contracts a little bit more stringent, uh-huh. uh, make them a little bit more tight. And understand. without that lesson, you wouldn't do that. So that lesson is very critical for your growth. Now I understand yeah. why <clears throat> there was a contract that I had uh, mm-hmm. in you was put as a benchmark mm-hmm. that you were unsuckable. Oh. Like, kufutwa <laughs> kazi, <laughs> you were you are unfireable mm-hmm. for, for two years. And <clears throat> a team, you were at a place where uh, yeah. you got the job. Mm-hmm. And these, but, are, these are the stories in the village. Uh-huh. Yeah, no, you can either <coughs> confirm yes. or deny <laughs> that once you sign the contract, one month in the job, mm-hmm. if someone fires you, they mm-hmm. have to pay you two years ahead. Yeah. How did that happen? It's provided for in the a document that you sign. It's provided you for. It has, for that. it has to be written. If it's not written, it doesn't hold. It doesn't hold. It doesn't. 
Yeah. Okay. Uh, probably what you want to ask, uh, how do you then get to have such a tight uh, contract or agreement? Uh, it's what we said earlier. If you don't have knowledge of how it works, then, and you don't have the confidence in your product, and if you don't show value, if you don't show the owner who wants to give you money that if we work together, in the first year, I will make you X amount of money. The second year, I'll make you this amount of money. And consistently, you must have understood that it's possible. And then that's what you sell. <clears throat> and therefore, when you start the job, the perception that you can't be sacked, it's not because it's watertight, because there are provisions of that. They, they can always terminate the contract at any point. How do you then support what is on the contract? You support what is on the contract with your deliverables and delivering beyond measure. So that then gives you security of tenure. Mm. Yeah. Ah, okay. Yeah. So uh, in terms of getting paid, mm -hmm. uh, this you said uh, Tony was uncomfortable with the UK arrangement yes. because of when the money was coming. Yes. So your terms of engagement was that you get paid first. It was on goodwill, trust, uh, brotherly, brotherhood, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, we are from Kenya, we are one, you know, mm -hmm. all the wrong parameters for a contract. The contracts are not emotional. Money is not emotional. Man, that's <laughs> money, a strong statement. Yeah. Money is not emotional. Money, what does that mean? Money, money is a... Uh, uh, money, money, sorry, sorry. <clears throat> <laughs> money is zero to nine. It has got no emotions. It's a combination of numbers. So never negotiate your contract on emotions. They don't hold. It doesn't count. No, it doesn't. And also in your previous point, <clears throat> in terms of negotiation, yeah. you do not negotiate on your funniness. Yes. No, you don't. You negotiate on what you're bringing to on the, the table. table. Yes. And you have to make it worthwhile, the person who's giving you the payment and the money. It's an exchange of a product. You're exchanging your trade or your product with his cash. It's actually better trade, to be honest. When, 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 at what point do you learn this thing that you're saying that money is not emotional? Uh, money has no friendship, I believe. That's yeah, another yeah, way. Yeah, yeah. Akuna chati, ah, mazesi ni maboi sana. Yeah, yeah. Nothing like that. Nita kusot. Nita kusot. There's no future in a transaction. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The transaction is made, by the way, and tightened before you take off. That's why you pay for your ticket on the aeroplane before you board. So that is how, that, those are some of the things we learned that I need to learn to take your money and give you a guarantee of my product. Money first. Yes. Why do you think people have a problem? Yeah. Uh, people are okay with paying for an air ticket first, mm -hmm. but the other things that people want are not ready to commit to. Then you don't understand what you're looking for. By the way, if, if, it, it's, it's not about you. It's, it's not about <laughs> how you feel. It's not, it's not I, I feel uncomfortable. No, no, it's, 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 it's sorry. It's, it's an exchange. Okay? I, I'm an artist. The legal redress you can get for me being unable to offer you the service mm. at the point I'm required to. Now, we can negotiate on the terms. I can take your 50%. I can take your 75%. I can take your 100%, depending on the nature of the contract and the nature of the service that you require from me. So I've got all those, you know, parameters that I said. You have also to be, you know, flexible for the client. Would That's you give me 50% upfront for commitment? How sure am I that I will still be performing on that day? It's never about, it's never, it's never about protecting the client. It's also protecting you. The client cannot say it's all about our money. How about my loss of revenue? Mm -hmm. What if on that day it rains that is beyond me? Would you say I didn't show up for the gig? That is where you are close. Uh, uh, it has a French name, and I think it's I, I can't. Yeah, yeah, that that Something, thing. Yeah. yeah, you can scroll it on the screen because mm -hmm. I, I come from Kisi. We are. 
problems with combinations of R, J, mm. D in one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, mm. The fours, the ma- yeah, yeah, that major, one. Yeah, like yeah, that. Beyond, your, beyond your control. control. Yes. So how do you protect that? You've got to think through that too. So it's not so much about the client being protected for their money. We also have to protect you as a service provider. On that day, you will be available, you will be on time, but there are no stage. So mm-hmm. are you telling me that uh, I failed to give you my trade? I was present, I was on time as per the regulations and the contract we signed. Mm-hmm. And therefore, the onus is on you to pay me. But how do you uh, start to negotiate to be paid if the money is on the other side? Mm-hmm. You're better off at a point of refund than payment. Wow. So it's easier for me to take your money Hold it in trust. If I don't show up, I give it back to you, plus penalties. Yes, yes. It's also nice for me to hold your money because the day I show up and it rained and there was no stage, it's not beyond, it's beyond me. Mm-hmm. It's not my control that you didn't have the necessary paraphernalia for me to perform. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. And you started as a group. Mm-hmm. Your brand was a group. Yes. Um, were there challenges mm-hmm. in businesses in, before we even go to that, mm-hmm. does this mean, before we close on that point, does it mean you only need to transact with people who understand what they need? Uh, I would say that is a yes. Uh, because if they lack the understanding, no matter how much you talk, they will not get it. There is nothing like I prove your value first in this, uh, then you can pay me. Uh, n- no. Wongo. No. No. By the time we are negotiating, there's something we are exchanging. Okay. Yeah, so what are we proving? Am I, okay, then let me also say from an artist's perspective, show me the money. How sure am I you have the money? Remember the UK story, I'll give you the money. We're in the same plane together, mm, so mm, don't worry. Mm, we, mm. We, show me the money. So did you end up in the plane together by the, the UK? No. Because I would have wondered. It was, how that it, it was entertainment to us. He entertained us. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and we... We, we have a lesson to tell now. Without and, that act, we wouldn't be talking. And <clears throat> do you ever, for someone to, to show you mm. a Range Rover that they've bought by um, selling your tapes, right? Mm. Mm-hmm. Have you ever thought about the amount of, and this is, I think, hypothetical, <clears throat> this mm. is probab- probabilistic, mm-hmm. uh, this is predicting things that did not happen. Mm-hmm. So let me put that out there. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> did you ever think about the amount of money you lost if you would have maxed, maximized Mm. on the potential of what you could have earned by the brand you created. Look, today, forget then. We are losing revenue today. Loss of revenue comes in many ways. It's, sometimes it's beyond your control. Mm-hmm. Uh, what we are sharing here, from my end, I'm looking, at, I'm looking at it from knowledge that is useful for people to use and make money. But mm-hmm. they'll never come back to me and, and, and tell me, by the way, <clears throat> whatever you said there made me change my attitude and therefore I made money and here is 300 shillings. So loss of revenue is in, it's, it's inevitable. It's, it's not predictable. You don't know you lose revenue. Mm. Uh, but you, today people watch more of our clips online. Mm. Some that I never posted, some that Tony or KJ never posted. They have 2 million views and I think they have monetized that. And we don't have any, any way that we can, you know, redeem that. Do you think there's yeah. knowledge you could have gotten <clears throat> back then mm. that would have enabled you to leverage mm. on that today? I want to say that at the point we did what we did, we got the best out of what we did at that time. Okay. So we have no hang-ups. Okay. Yeah, I, I think our 10,000 then is equivalent to your 1 million now. Good so we, we, we are kind of satisfied. It's contentment. Good point. Yeah. Uh, did you ever have uh, the challenge of having created a brand mm-hmm. as three people? Mm-hmm. Now, there are businesses that come as solo. Mm-hmm. Uh, did that ever present a challenge for what you used to do? No, it didn't. Because we made provisions for transition. We knew we were as good as a team. And I knew that I depended on KJ or Tony to be successful. So there was dependency mm. on each other. Mm. And anytime you broke away, then you, a solo career, had to have a different brand. And that is why when we diversified and went on radio, then the character Nyambane came on to being. Yeah. Because then that 
that channel provides for a solo performance, okay. not because we were breaking as a team. Okay. Yeah, it's where we're going dictates whether you're going all of you or one of you is going. Okay. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, and you don't be aware that even as a solo career, the other two guys supported that solo career. Okay. Yeah. Okay. From a creative perspective, from moral support, and and always being there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, this was my personal struggle listening mm. to Nyambane on radio. Yeah. Can this guy speak normal? <laughs> and there was a time you guys were had been arrested. Yes. I was waiting in court. Useme kitu ndio nione kama. Even that's how you. Niwe we niwe we. Niwe we. Yes. That's how you talk. <clears throat> um, did you struggle? transitioning to radio the when you know it's an act it's an act uh, that's why people call us our acting names that's why people you know they never know our names they know what we do and they associate us with what we do uh, <clears throat> for the longest i have suffered the stereotype uh, where they would always look at me as a comedian <clears throat> which is not a problem uh the comedy i call it a very effective uh tool for communication so it's not the comedy it's what we mm. communicate in a very nice packaged you know palatable way that you enjoy learning we are not lecturing you we are entertaining you as we teach you mm. so mm. so comedy to me that suffering the brand of people not noticing the difference between what you do and who you are uh, those things do happen and the language you're talking about Uh, in order for me to bring out the character Nyambane, I needed to understand that character. Mm. I needed to internalize that character. I needed to become that character. In order, that's what we did for Moi. We had to study. We had to look at his mannerism. We had to look at his personality. We had to look at his everything around him, and and therefore for you to be able to bring it in a way that it's exactly when people look at you, they're like, yeah, we connect okay. with it. So. <clears throat> that that I, i that transition that you're talking about uh f- for for me it was in a transition uh we didn't need to make drastic change it existed before we enacted it okay yeah and uh, i'm not i'm not saying this to you because you're our guest today i've said mm. this uh, to my friends and mm. uh, they can bear me witness okay you're the only comedian who's managed to to perform at a national event and um harness all the energy pamoja and this is specific to uh it was an event where president uhuru kenyatta was there. kenya at 50 kenya at 50 yeah. right <clears throat> yeah i'd like I'm, i'm i've always been very curious about the process mm. yeah every comedian go check this out it's a very tough crowd like kenyans when you come national celebrations mm-hmm. na wakute wote center that thing ulifanya na ukaenda what was the process was it, is, is this coming from understanding kenyans you in crowds ama that was uliangukia moment let me give credit to all artists and performers out there with this for you to entertain a crowd you need to understand their psychology for you to understand their psychology then you must be very good at reading emotions and people and that is a science that psychology so mm-hmm. i want to give it to every artist out there who's able to hold a crowd even if it's for 3 4 minutes because then you understand the psyche of the people that you're talking to going to that very specific event the back side of an event like that is understanding that we had been contracted <clears throat> to perform at a particular time and then on the day someone chickened out and they were trying to short change us on the day because now the power that were were trying now to check the president and check the heads of states who are there there are more heads of state than we anticipated uh there are more dignitaries that who are here than we anticipated now we need to find a way of managing these ridiculous guys So part of that uh, moment of trying to run the program and run us out of the program then we understood we were at risk and so we had to start our act earlier than 
anticipated. And so we created a crisis. And so that crisis is what you're turning to. You started preparing the crowd and the crowd started to see you and you started approaching the microphone. And so it gives them time to be curious about what you do before you do it. And then you left. Yes. It's called 90 seconds. So Hakuna, there's nothing like <laughs> yeah. be patient. <clears throat> There's also a strategy mm. on where to perform, yeah. when to perform. And how to, it, how to do it. Because yeah. if you had waited to perform at the slotted time, yeah. you would ne- we would never have had the 90 the seconds. Effect. Yes. So how do you cut your 90 seconds, it's called? How do you, what is your before and after, before the main stage? And this is not a crowd that listens to jokes. No, they don't have the time. You don't have the time to prepare them. <clears throat> you don't. So you better have an act. And you better tweak it to suit the circumstances that you have. And those are some of the hardest gigs to do. The shorter the, the, the period, the harder the gig. No yeah. time to set up. No, you don't have time for setup. They don't have the time. The psychology doesn't allow them beyond a certain point. Yeah. Sawa. Mm-hmm. You, you transition now from comedy, <clears throat> you transition from radio as a presenter, mm-hmm. now to be a radio boss. Mm-hmm. How was it navigating corporate politics? Um, it, 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 I, I guess it will continue to, to be until you prove your worth. That's what happens. Uh, but going back to our conversation that we've had of Listen, when you understand who you are, when you understand what you've got to offer, and when you naturally must remind yourself, and that's what I talked about earlier, it was nice to be on the stage. But you need to add a W onto your own stage to owning the stage. And owning the stage is when you're able to look at, look at, Beyond me, as Walter being an entertainer, how can I give opportunity to others using my template and my style? And that's the mentorship that you're talking about. That's the apprenticeship that you're talking about Mm -hmm. when you now start to own that stage. Okay. And we also, and I also had to remember that owning stage is not, you've been on stage, now you own the stage as the radio manager, you call the shots, you give the guidance and you package what the audience receives. We naturally now must transition to not only being on stage and not only owning the stage, but then influencing the policies and the legislations that affect that chain of command. Okay. Now that's where you find that when we go into government, we are, we are not necessarily transitioning from being the comedians that we are, <clears throat> but we're just giving you a different level of the same product. Okay. It was nice to watch people on stage. It was nice to be watched on stage. It was nice to provide what was on stage. But now it's even better as a policymaker mm. to create policies that then someone like KJ, who's a member of parliament, yeah. to now create laws and legislation that then support the policies and the dreams and aspirations that we have for those who are on stage, those who are on the stage, and those who are aspiring to be on stage, and those who are watching. Okay. So we, we are actually doing the same thing only from a different angle. Okay. Yes. You, you are criticized for a decision that um, uh, we can say that uh, the opposition has struggled to do. <laughs> which, time. which one is that? Stopping reggae. <laughs> 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 Closing down a reggae station and uh, being on top at this point. Yes. Uh, and I think these are difficult um, when you look at it from the perspective of you're very big on youth empowerment, youth and agenda. Nini, nini. Uh, when you get to a place, because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. what how ha- okay, to sema, money has no emotions. Mm-hmm. How's the decision? to fire people. Mm -hmm. Do we go back to money has no emotions? Uh, I've not gotten to a point where I need to fire an employee. You did not fire people. I've not gotten there. 
because I understand that they offer me or they offer the organization a service. I can terminate the service, but I can't fire an employee. You can terminate the service, but you cannot fire You can't fire the employee because... So <clears throat> let me tell you why I'm saying that. Mm. The guy or the lady you think you're firing goes with what he was doing. You as a comedian that they call you, mm -hmm. you as a radio host, it's your ability to host the show that keeps you here. Now, if you go, you go with the ability. So when do you fire an employee? When they go with the ability. What should people do? What you do is you terminate the service. That's what you do. But terminating the service... they be jobless on the job. <laughs> well, it's, it's, if you think through it, you realize that, uh, one, you, you're actually, as, as a manager, you're being empathetic. That's where the feelings are. That's when now you, you look at them as they have a source of livelihood. Mm. Whatever they are doing earns them money for their families and they are supporting an ecosystem. And therefore, when you're making certain decisions to let them go, with this, to terminate the service that they're giving you, you're actually letting them go and you're affecting an ecosystem behind them. So that's where the empathy as a manager must check in. So yes, you understand that this is a business, this is a transaction, but man, there's empathy. It's a social fabric. People give you a service because they're earning to support a certain yeah. uh, system. But if you, if you just narrowly look at the service they give you, and you are quick to terminate it without looking at the repercussions that it has, mm -hmm. then uh, you're just being a manager. You're not being a leader. Now, a leader has to process all those things together. And even if they've got to let you go, mm -hmm. stop giving us the service, uh, I mean, I mean it, you, do you know you can actually uh, be let go in the most harmless way and you still be happy and you don't notice you are let go yeah, because basically. people leave you with what you call your dignity okay yeah in, in which case yeah in which case after mm -hmm. you terminate the service mm -hmm. you still have the person mm -hmm. what do you do with them am i terminating the service oh, I... you see let me paint this picture if i don't need you here somebody will need you there so what i need to live with you is the ability to go there Ah, okay. No, that's where the empathy, that's where the I dignity, understand. that's where the respect comes in. Because just because I'm done with the part of the service does not mean my neighbor doesn't need it. So I don't need to strip you of your dignity. I don't have to strip you because I know you're going somewhere where they will begin to enjoy your services. So yeah. letting go of people <clears throat> requires a strategy. Uh, requires empathy. Now that's when you have to be a human being. You can help them craft their next moves or even help them see mm -hmm. what's next yeah. or possibly connect them to With where the next. their services yes. are needed. Yes. Uh, it's, it's, and, and, and that's what leadership is all about. Managers will count the number of shoes you've made. A leader will provide an environment for you to surpass the number of shoes that I will count. Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. Ah. Interesting. And so far, um, mm. what's the biggest lesson you have learned about money apart from not being emotional? Ah, uh, money can be fun, but that money, uh, if not utilized well, yes, it becomes it becomes a bitter agenda. That sounds from experience. To be you, bitter experience. <clears throat> Uh, as an artist, there's a tendency to take when you're in, in the cinema language, we call it now showing. When you're the heat of the moment, when, when you're at the top of your career, and you mistake that to be, this is my lifestyle, this is forever. So I made 200,000 last week. I'll just blow it up. Next week, I have a gig on Sunday. That's another 200. I have another gig at the end of the month. And you begin to be accustomed to the flowing and not knowing that at some point, 
it will stop flowing in the manner that is flowing. Did you ever go through that stage? It, I wouldn't be talking about it if I didn't. Please tell us. Yeah, because there was a time that we were fully booked every week and money is coming in. So therefore, it's okay for us to blow the money for this week because money is coming in next week. It's never a mistake, by the way, to think like that. Mm -hmm. What the only knowledge that we can share with you now is to realize that it's not forever. It will flow consistently, but it gets to a point where even the Israelites, my friend, in the Bible, you know they were given that daily bread that we talk about on a daily basis, manna from heaven, dropped consistently, every single day, same time, same slot. And you couldn't carry it forward to tomorrow mm. because tomorrow there was a fresh supply. So you don't have to carry it from yesterday. Uh, there was tomorrow, there was fresh supply. But until one day, the manna stopped flowing. Now, that's when you realize that you do not have to keep the manna in order for you to survive. That's the, that's the diversity that we're talking about. What did you do with the money that you're earning yesterday for it to replicate itself for tomorrow? What did we do as, 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 as a team? We diversified. The money that we were earning from comedy, we put it into the entertainment industry. We put it into supplying equipment. We put it into supplying lights. We put it into supplying things that are within the trade that we were doing. So you don't take money that you earn from the entertainment industry and you invest in a kayak, two different products that are not related. So you don't have consistency of your investment. So any investment you're making, if you love entertainment, thank you. You can make sustainable investment within the entertainment ecosystem and value chain. And you, it will still be separate from putting all your eggs in one basket. Yeah. Yeah, those are different baskets within the same value chain. If you invest yes. in entertainment, right? Mm. Uh, a different uh, channel of entertainment, mm -hmm. right? Uh, then COVID comes. Mm -hmm. Then events, because entertainment is tied to events for mm -hmm. the most part. Mm -hmm. COVID comes, <clears> leg <throat> stops, mm -hmm. right? Mm. versus someone who has invested in, say, real estate. Of course, real estate was also affected by COVID. Uh, I can tell you that you, that's an assumption that we've made that could, not, uh, that could not be a reflection of the reality. When you talk about COVID checks in, it doesn't mean that uh, people didn't require entertainment. People are confined. People are at their homes. People needed entertainment. People needed to psychologically be entertained in a different format. It means you who's offering stage performance, how do you repackage yourself to offer screen performance that people can now watch from their phones? Flexi how do you now turn your product from a stage performance to a stage performance that can be recorded and that can be aired? So it's, 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 it's actually diversifying the same product. Mm -hmm. within the same market. So the, the COVID in its own nature was an opportunity. Okay. Uh, it, it's, we call it diverse, opportunity in diversity, in, in, in diverse situations. When it's, when it's dire, it's an opportunity. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and it's, it's, it's an unfortunate situation okay. that uh, doctors thrive when we are sick. Sometimes I wonder, how does that guy who supplies coffin think? <laughs> when you ask him, how is the business? <laughs> what, what is he meant to tell you? <laughs> pray for COVID. <laughs> yeah, mm. you never know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's possible that you can actually thrive and diversify your product and tweak it and make, make it flexible mm. to still suit any market. And did you ever, because most of the things you're saying sounds mm. like they're coming from learning from experience mm. for the most part. Yes. Was there a time mm. when you were fully booked and money was flowing. Yes. Mana season. Yes. That um, you used best money, back mm -hmm. and then later you are ashamed of, am uh, uh, Fortunately and luckily, no. Okay. Uh, and sometimes when you don't have, I, when, when, when you're not, when you don't grow with that money, there is such certain culture that you develop 
when you grow without that man. Yes, there's a certain culture that you develop. Uh, that, that when you get it, actually, it's very hard to let it go. Ushaskiani, wale watu, akona do like in socks. Yeah, you, and you when you look at their background, they never hid. But at least you can have a TV. Yeah, Ah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 uh, we, I, I can say, I don't have an experience that. I can mm. honestly say that there was mismanagement of, of resources. The education also helped. The, the, the schooling and the time you get into the industry also, the timing has some aspect of stability. Okay. Yeah, yeah. How was it, uh, how, before we talk contentment, mm. as we close, how was it being famous in the early 2000s? What was the experience? Man, that was fame. That was fame. That was real fame. That, that one, you were famous. That one, you were celebrity. Why? Because the limited opportunity that people had to watch you or be entertained by you were limited. Mm. And therefore, if people celebrated you at that point, you you a celebrity. Today, it's very hard to say. Everybody is a content creator. Yeah, Everybody, yes, they, they, the platforms are diverse. So it's, it's out of the diversity and the presence of platforms that we know you, not because you had a compelling product. People used to watch one channel. They used to sit down and watch as a family. Mm. Now that's fame. Okay. That's fame. And you used to feel it to get them there. Uh, and then we reminded ourselves every day, they love what we do. They don't love us. So don't let it get into your head. Very important. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, contentment. Mm -hmm. uh, you could have continued doing ridiculous for as long as you wanted. You could, you could have continued with the monopoly. Yes. Why did you stop? We didn't stop. We moved on. The difference is very simple. Just because you're good at what you do does not mean it's forever. It do doesn't you need mean to it's forever. Stop yourself, or you need to wait for the stopping from. It's called having the D in your, in in your fan. It's called discipline. And knowing when to start and when to stop. It doesn't matter of <clears throat> how great you are. It doesn't matter how high you are. It gets to a point where you need to say, "I'm good," and it's enough. It's discipline, by the way. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. A wise man once said that discipline solves 99% of your problem. Which one? Who was that? Someone wise. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Uh, it would be nice to know him. Do you have his number or something? Yeah. Ah, our hangers always mm. talk about threatening and yeah. that kind of stuff. <laughs> our Thank Maju, you. they give mm. wisdom. Okay. Amen. Hey, Asante sana for sharing your knowledge Thank you. with us. Thank I you. trust that this goes a long way. Mm. Uchanua, everyone, I think the principles you talked about uh, can be applied universally mm. and in all industries, both product and service. Yes. Yeah. Asante sana. Thank you. Hey. Thank you for the opportunity. Asante sana for sticking with us up to this point. I hope you enjoyed our content. I trust this was time well wasted. Please feel free to join our family by hitting subscribe and turning on the notifications bell. We have so much good vibes are already uploaded on the channel. We have so much more coming through. I also hope that you loved our location. This uh, episode has been shot at Wojo, a premium co-working space located in Upper Hill, Nairobi, Makiwa Hotel, formerly Crown Plaza. If you ever have office needs, premium, classy working space that can bring out the most out of you in terms of creativity, productivity, you need to check out Wojo. In fact, we are leaving a link for you in the description below so that you can get in touch. I've been your host, Dr. Kingori. See you on the next one.